So we recently partnered with the National Department of, on, of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation uh, in an evidence map uh, which is called the National Strategic Plan on Gender-Based Violence and Femicide in South Africa. And I think uh, partnering with peers really allowed us to create sort of a co-production in which um, as us as the method experts sort of partnered with the Department uh, of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation and also the Department of Women itself and we created this evidence map to inform um, um, this uh, uh, framework that exists uh, in SA uh, to fight against the scourge of gender-based violence and femicide uh, in, in, in SA. Uh, and it's quite instrumental in a sense that um, it really uh, shows the, the value of co-production because uh, there's, there's very uh, a good chance that that evidence base will be used. Uh, we presented the evidence uh, base to a, a, a group called the Pillar 6, which is uh, Pillar 6 would be set up by the National Strategic Plan to oversee uh, our knowledge management and research. So there's a committee that is set up uh, to sort of uh, guide that particular um, pillar and we did present the work to them and they really received it quite well. So I think it, it really points to the importance of corporate action and involving uh, the end user in the process of uh, um, developing evidence. The first thing we do in any project, any knowledge translation product, is map stakeholders from diverse backgrounds with different power balances there to put everyone in the same table. And from the problem definition, prioritization, uh, the, the choice about how we'll frame it to look for evidence, the validation of what we found, Everyone is in the table all the time during the process. Our portfolio gets bigger every time we engage more people. And in this process, people get uh, awareness and they are sensible to the evidence-informed decision-making debate. They are able to understand how their values and preferences will play a part. They're able to understand that evidence is one part of the puzzle, but not everything. This is how our portfolio gets bigger and better and more adapted to the different social sectors that we work because we always do everything in radical collaboration. So previously we had to connect with each you know, team at the ministry, but now we have one team that is dedicated to uptake research. So we were able to at least, you know, advise and influence in the direction. So the second thing is that now we are working to institutionalize health technology assessment, which is one of the main uh, routes to evidence and foreign policy making in health and so last year we were able to conduct a national uh, situational analysis on health technology assessment so we were able to indicate one of the main problems in that area is the lack of organizational setup and institutionalization so because of that now we are in collaboration with the ministry of health working on developing a roadmap to the institutionalization of health technology assessment which hopefully we will be, you know, on the stage of piloting by next year or so. It is always important to move that extra step of uh, actually engaging the citizens who are going to be impacted by the evidence or the policy that is going to be uh, informed by the evidence you're providing. So that way, uh, if you go out and engage with the citizens, in the first place, uh, you, first, you are supposed to first give the citizens the, what the evidence says so that their contributions for the policy making process is heavily informed by the evidence. When you engage with the citizens, you get a more wider perspective and view of the context in which the policy is going to apply or in which the policy is going to sit. So that way you, 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 you're more like striking the balance between what the evidence says and um, what the citizen input is and all these things are coming into play to uh, inform the policy decision that is going to be taken.